In this video, I will describe how you use gel electrophoresis to determine someone's genotype. Gel electrophoresis is a process that allows you to separate DNA molecules based on size. You place different sized fragments of DNA into a gel and then apply a current to the buffer surrounding the gel. The DNA will travel through the gel but move at different speeds based on the different fragment sizes. Larger fragments of DNA will move much slower through the gel than smaller fragments. So how can we use gel electrophoresis to tell us a person's genotype for a specific trait? Let's say you have two possible alleles for a gene, the big A allele and the little a allele. The big A allele happens to contain a restriction site that will allow it to be cleaved by a certain restriction enzyme, while the little a allele has a mutation in that restriction site that means that it will not be recognized and cleaved by that same restriction enzyme. Remember that a person will have two copies of this gene and can be homozygous containing two of the same allele or heterozygous containing two different alleles. Someone with the homozygous genotype big A big A only has versions of this gene that will be cut by the restriction enzyme each allele producing a small fragment of DNA and a medium-sized fragment of DNA. Someone with the genotype little a little a only has the versions of the gene that do not have the restriction site and therefore do not get cut by the restriction enzyme. A DNA sample from this person will have single larger fragments of DNA. When you isolate DNA from a heterozygote containing both the big A allele and the little a allele, Half of the DNA you isolated has the allele with the restriction site that gets cut into two fragments, while the other half of this person's DNA will have the allele that does not have the restriction site and remains whole when a restriction enzyme is added. If I were to digest all three of these different DNA samples and run them through a gel, I would be able to distinguish which sample came from which genotype based on the number and sizes of the fragments that appeared when running the gel. So let's say I apply a restriction enzyme to the DNA sample from a person with the genotype big A big A and I inject this sample into lane one of my gel. Then I add restriction enzyme to a sample from a person with the genotype little a little a and I inject this sample into lane two of my gel. And in the third lane, I place a sample from a heterozygote that has had the restriction enzyme applied to it as well. Then I run current through the gel and watch the DNA travel. As you can see, in lane one, the DNA that contained only big A alleles separates into two distinct bands. This band contains all the medium sized fragments and this band contains all of the smaller sized fragments. In lane two, the DNA contained only little a alleles which did not get cut by the restriction enzyme and therefore remained large. These large molecules did not travel very far in the gel and because they were all the same size, we see only one distinct band of DNA in this lane. And in lane three, the DNA contained some big A alleles and some little a alleles. And you can see evidence of both in the lane. This DNA came from the little a allele and these two bands are from the fragments created by cutting the big A allele with the restriction enzyme. So there you have it. As long as you know which allele contains the restriction site, you can determine someone's genotype based on how the DNA behaves in a gel after it has been digested with a restriction enzyme. If you'd like to learn more about how restriction enzymes work to cleave DNA, see my video on restriction enzymes. If you're interested in gel electrophoresis, you can see my video covering that process as well.